Hey, everybody. Today is May 31st. This is the KCP community meeting. We have uh, some things on the agenda for today. If you would like to add something, please feel free. Um, we will start with um, skipping over the first topic that we save for the end on incoming issues and milestone topics. So uh, the first one here is logo voting. So uh, Stefan, do you want to chat about this? I would give the voice to, to Rob, he's here. Okay, great. Hey, yeah, so all, uh, mostly what I did is just uh, put up a um, issue for folks to do emoji reactions to, and I just counted those up when the deadline closed. Um, and so uh, you can, if you scroll up slightly, you can see those results. Um, the kind of option two and three were the ones that had equal votes, and they're, they're pretty similar. And so um, I think we'll pursue some of those uh, uh, kind of that realm of graphical design um, and uh, we'll go from there. Um, did you want to talk about these ones specifically, Stefan? Yeah, the main question is what color, whether we want to select one or we just leave it open. And other than that, I mean, those are just variants we can pick for whatever purpose. Yeah, so any um, opinions on uh, color schemes and that kind of stuff? I think we can uh, do some more exploration as well. And uh, I know there are some Red Hat designers that um, get involved in community projects like this just to make sure that they have nice identities so we can uh, chat with those folks as well. Well, Maybe, like blue, yeah. Personally. yeah, I like the green and blue too. Um, maybe we should do a vote on general color ideas. Async. Sure. I mean, yeah, we can keep this issue open for folks to uh, comment on things if you if you like, um, and either revisit next week or in some other period of time. I mean, if you want to hear about colors, I like the ones that span more of the hue spectrum. Right? The ones on the right seem more restricted. The ones on the left more cover more of the spectrum. Red and blue is kind of a classic combo. I mean, I know that gradient gets in the pink scale, but um, it's a nice combo. Well, why don't we plan to, um, Rob, if, if you can, do th something similar like you did up at the top on instructions uh, around colors and voting. Uh, we can circle back in a week or two. Sure. And what do folks think about getting some of the um, Red Hat designers to do a few iterations of this? They might have some more ideas as well. Sounds good to me. Okay, cool. Yeah, I'll reach out to them and we'll just use this issue to keep. Uh, going down that. Great, thank you. OK, um, so next up is 0 to 6 planning. Stefan, did you want to do this? You want me to talk about it? Yeah, you can do it, or Paul, I don't know, wants to okay. use. So, um, we, we haven't quite closed out 0 0.5. Today is the last day in May. Um, so we may have a little bit of another day or two um, working on that. Let me, before we get into 0 0.6 real quick, just pull up the milestone. So these tend to be mostly the epics, um, several of them. So the uh, one at the bottom and code generating or code generate scoping wrappers those go together the um deploy an app sa cube configs point to kcp i think we just have that one pr from joaquin that we need to close that out that's uh, still a work in progress um advanced scheduling stuff on what's What's it's just the... documentation. I started a PR. Um, okay. So code is done. code is done. So same and as then, the next one. 
this next one is around placement or yeah yeah it's a, it, they are both combined so advanced scheduling is part of the multi-release epic okay um so out of all of these things what strictly has to get done for zero five to close out? Is it all of them? Do we want to move anything? So if we if we branch today, what is missing? That's a question mark. Um, API export authorization would be missing. Yeah, so the authorization isn't there. Um, how, far, how far is it? There's a PR already, or where are we such? No, I'm not anywhere close to getting a PR. Okay. Uh, I talked to David today about maybe combining some of the work around this with um, the another virtual workspace authorization. Um, so like but, framework together for all virtual workspaces. No, no, you just do, need to do a SAR. Do, do we care about this in 0 0.5? I mean, in the branch, we care a lot about getting it done in the next week or so. Okay. I, if, if the goal is just to get it up and that, uh, maybe there's something tactical we could do and then come back to this. I don't, I don't think it's a blocker for 0 0.5. And I know, I guess, Stefan, you came in here and <laughs> edited. Um, yeah, I mean, nobody uses it in production anyway for the moment. So yes, it's open. There's no auth. We know that. But people are unblocked by it. So I also think it's not blocking. Hmm. Um, Keep on so working on it. I mean, fix it. but. It's enough if we have it in a week. And then we do have um, there's but, uh, sorry, um, just just by the way, there is the the corresponding in the um, Synchro virtual workspace. Exactly, I mean the SAR we have to emit is not the same, but but the the you know mechanics would be would be mainly the same. And this is also in the stretch goal of zero that five, but what's you know not made as a blocker, but but as a stretch goal. So if we if we move also on the API exports on the stretch goal side, that would be just you know exactly at the same status both for both virtual workspaces. Okay, that sounds good to me. Um, there is some work left in our fork of controller runtime to. Um, get the indexing working correctly. And then I have something that I've been working on that I started last week um, to make it so that you can easily just spin up a main.go that can, uh, using a helper, go look up the API export, um, go get the virtual workspace URL for it, and then, you know, write a controller that that works appropriately um that is not anything that needs to block 0 0.5 though like it can come in when it's ready so back to what's missing i don't know that anything is really missing in the kcp server layer um other than like fixing this would be nice to have what's your estimate david and your team is this something you can finish by tomorrow? So that's that's related to the the open peer from your team, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. this one. Or this one. I yeah. hope so. I mean yeah. there are still some some comments to address some comments, but I'm working on that. Yeah, the the, the last time. We discussed about it. It seems we, we were quite near. So I would suggest we wait for that for tomorrow and then launch. Sounds good. Okay, should I move on to the doc? Okay, 
So um, the schedule that we have right now is fairly tight. So it would be next week for design and scoping, and then uh, not even three weeks for getting to code complete. And um, as before, we do want to try and be very careful about what we put in the milestone instead of just continuing to kick the can down the road and, and pushing thing from one mile, things from one milestone to the next. We want to only put things in the milestone that we realistically think we should and can be working on. So uh, the list that we have in here is a, a multi-release thing on sharding. And Stefan, did you want to talk about what we have in here? Yeah, I put the elephant there. That's a big thing. It's super important to get this in and have, a, I mean, to have something because it changes the future of our APIs, especially how users um, build controllers. So there's this doc, so review, uh, comments are welcome, things, replication claim. That's one idea, other ideas are welcome. So please read through it. The goal basically is to have a second shard, maybe under a feature gate at the end of the uh, prototype six and see how many of the controllers we can make work mm. and to change whatever must be changed to make them work. So okay. if we have two shards, that's perfect for this release. Ah. And then this part of it as well, cross workspace list and watch results. Yeah, this, that's one part of how does a controller talk to multiple shards? Okay. When shards come and go, for example. Yeah, and then and then in this is also included the 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 management of a list of several uh, URLs in the various virtual workspace clients. Do we have a, a common framework for all these use cases? We have to talk. I mean, there are starting points in the doc, which is referenced, but there's plenty of work to do. So. OK, so that's the sharding topic. And then the next one is quota, which um, I took a look last week on whether or not we could take the upstream Kubernetes admission and controller for quota that as a first step, just enabling it per workspace. So there'd be no, no roll up or aggregation of specifying quota at the top and then having uh, descendant workspaces participating in that. that. It would just be within a workspace, you specify quota and it works just like quota in a single cluster would work. Um, beyond that, we would want to look into something that's more fully featured around uh, rollup, but not probably not for um, 0 0.6. Moving on, we want to do user home workspaces. So right now we have a virtual workspace server that handles personal workspaces and also will deduplicate names if two people in the same org try to create a workspace with the same name, we would like to try and um, move instead to having a, a concept of a, like a home directory or a home workspace hierarchy that's mm -hmm. separate from organization workspaces so that it truly is tied to a user and the user would own what essentially is their own home workspace or home org workspace. And in there, they can create as many workspaces as quota <laughs> when it's there will allow them to do. Uh, and we feel like that's pretty important for um, running this at scale as well in a, a multi-org environment. Does this include also the design about workspace sharing? That yes, it it would just be straight up. So in the home workspace hierarchy, it's just normal RBAC, and and mm -hmm. there's no real design beyond what we currently have. Mm -hmm. Uh, but we can talk more if you want. Is the question like, would I be able to grant a different user in my org access to my 
underlying workspace for my home. So I have like grant sync on my workspace object in particular. Is that the question? Or yes, I mean, yeah. my question was, yes, for now, we don't have any notion of, of sharing a workspace to a distinct user. I mean, a workspace I created, and that's obviously something that would be needed. And yeah, I, I, my question was, do we include that into the 0 0.6 or? So if we do a, a hierarchy in the works, uh, in, you know, in the key space that is like root users, some sort of bucketing mechanism, and then a username or mm. user ID, then that essentially is like an org workspace. And you would be able to create individual sub workspaces in there that represent apps or whatever you want. And because you would be admin in your your top level user workspace, yeah. you can create all the RBAC resources that you need to grant groups and users permission to your sub workspaces. Yeah. You would not be able to grant someone permission to your home workspace unless we sure. design that um, separately. Or yeah, know. so I mean, as soon as we only share something under the home, uh, the user home workspace, uh there is no specific design only possibly just cosmetics with the kcp uh, command line to ease the sync and, and create the the correct role bindings but that's it yeah that's what you mean okay. yeah yeah and then outside of the user home workspace hierarchy and in, in the normal organization hierarchy we we have the same ux that we have today where you have to be uh, you have to have appropriate permissions in the parent workspace to be able to yeah. create role bindings to grant access to children. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Makes sense. All um, So moving on around continuing multi-workspace controller development, we have a sketch on thing permission claims. This is making it so that an API export author can define what APIs and possibly what resources by by name or something that they need in their API export so that they can um, access what they need to perform their business logic. Uh, that one, I think, probably will, we may start with just doing um, GVRs. So saying, like, within an API export, I need secrets and config maps and namespaces, whatever. And then a controller going through the virtual workspace for that would have access to those. Uh, but if you're interested in that, check out this doc. We also have uh, work on cluster workspace type, which is uh, everything that's in here around the initializing workspaces endpoint that merged, I think, yesterday. Uh, fixing some security holes in cluster workspace types and authorization and whatnot. So if you're interested in that, take out take a look at this issue. And then the last thing in here is around authorization for the API export virtual workspace, which Sean was talking about a few minutes ago. Uh, Stefan, you want to take on this one? Yeah, it's a big bucket of things. Um... The whole diagnostic topic becomes more important. Now we have location APIs, so people can use compute clusters, local no clusters they don't own, so they cannot really debug. And if something breaks, uh, they are lost. So we need something. So if somebody is interested in that, events is an obvious um, step, maybe conditions on certain objects. Um, any work in this direction is helpful. There are some design topics, um, location workspaces we talked about, so making compute services more composable that you can add your own workload clusters to an existing compute service. So using the same APIs, but having your own clusters. Design topic, not implement, but we have to think about that. Um, the third one here, the third item, similar to the second, but to provide additional APIs. Like, um, for example, if you have an open shift cluster and you, you export the Kubernetes APIs, 
you might have a second set of um, GBRs, which are for, for OpenShift type like deployment configs, for example. Similar things for KubeBird or FreeSD or whatever is in addition to cube types, but not every cluster provides, basically. Um, also connected thing resource set. It's probably the same as the second item here. Um, we don't want that a synker has a list of resources. So we want to have them somewhere in the API. So we have to come up with something. Either it's a different CID or it's inside of the workload cluster. You can see, you can decide what to do, but you have to solve that. So what do you mean that the synker should not uh, have the list of resources it should sync as an, as an input, right? Yeah. yeah, I mean, as input, yes, but through the API in some way. Not yeah, but, but is it even necessary knowing that uh, the virtu the Synchro Virtual Workspace already exposes only the APIs that, that are useful for the Synchro? I mean, so in the future, maybe, the Synchro would maybe. mainly just sync everything it sees. Oh, we are jumping into this topic already. Yeah. Um, your yeah. solution is also one, so we can talk about that. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Next one is... We have location APIs. We have no placement yet, but when we have placement, users want to know which locations exist. So kubectl get locations is obvious uh, CLI use case here. So we have to build a projected API. We have something similar with workspaces at the moment. Workspaces are projection of cluster workspaces. So we need a similar thing here for locations. Probably can use reuse lots of code. Um, that must be done. What else? Yeah, the ugly downstream namespace names. I'm not sure anybody's happy with them. They're like 63 characters long, I think. So anything shorter, which is still safe enough, uh, so safe enough against conflicts, naming conflicts would be nice. Um, placement in general, the placement object. We have sketches. We know more or less what we want. Somebody has to come up with an initial small placement API, like a CID, which lives in a workspace, in a user workspace, and can specify constraints, so at least um, label constraints, label selectors. Then we have placement authorization. So not everybody should deploy to prod clusters. So if you have a prod location, you have to protect it somehow. So, so some kind of authorization. And then the ongoing topic I want to put here, pod logs, pod exec, pod attach, all those things that uh, Antonio is working on, it's also on TMC. Thanks, Stefan. Um, so we've got some storage tasks potentially uh, in scope, maybe. Uh, I know we had some folks with storage expertise who have been thinking about this and talking about it. So. Hopefully, we'll get something there. Um, I would think that, if possible, just playing around with a persistent volume claim and seeing what happens would be cool. And then um, maybe, for starters, having a, something that can influence the scheduler that says, if a namespace has a PVC, don't allow it to move. Uh, don't, don't let it move workload clusters, don't let it move locations for starters. And then as the scheduler gets smarter, we can open that up. Uh, next up, we've got networking, although it looks like we may need to reach out to some networking folks to see if they're looking in it, uh, into it. And then some security things here at the end. So uh, this is a lot of work. I don't see any way that we're going to do all of this in a month uh, or less. So I think we, we might want to um, select a few things and elevate them to realistic goals and then leave everything else for stretch. Any Thoughts, comments, questions? I think the quota has been a big one people have been asking about. So that might be a good candidate for someone to own this time.
Um, yeah, I've actually started work on that, but I paused. I, I did just enough to sketch out a foundation and then paused when I realized I was going to need to go a few layers deeper. Um, but so I'd be happy to, to work on that or pass it off to somebody else. Should we put names behind of those people interested? It's not really a commitment, but at least those who are interested and want to start a discussion about designs. Yeah, I think your, that, would be, that would be great. Your plan like, was six to ten or something you said, right, for design and scoping? Yeah, exactly. That's what I was about to mention. Maybe it's a good point to start with names and say the expectation here is that if the names beside it, you'll lead some targeted design discussions, as well as creating the initial task breakdown like we've done in, in uh, GitHub in the past. It just kind of lists out, here's what we think we can accomplish. So it doesn't mean that you've got to do all the work, but at least drive the, the discussion around that. Um, yeah, so if you want to add this stuff now, that's great. If you want to think about it and um, come back later and add a name, that's cool too. Uh, no pressure, obviously. So um, maybe rather than putting pressure on folks, um, we can come back here and, and go on to our next topic, if that makes sense. Can we? at least ask that if you want to put your name by something please have it on by friday since next week is the session yeah that sounds good maybe i just had a question sorry about um tmc compute work uh, since it's a multi-release epic um do we envision working also on the stuff that is related to you know splitting uh, or, or I mean, uh, placing on several uh, workload clusters at the same time, which obviously drains the question. I mean, or raises the the, the topic of having um, a view per location, a view of the object per location, and and so also the transformations that that are still awaiting <laughs> uh, to be to be integrated. I mean, or is it something that we on purpose keep for uh, zero point seven? Seven. I would my, my gut is later, but what, what do you all think? I would call it a blocker for six full type six. I mean, keep working on it and rebase, and we can discuss. That's all fine. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that would not be a blocker, but yeah. I mean, my and feeling getting, as well is is that you know the more we wait, some, also. Yeah, 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 getting some parts in um, is also great. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, it could be split or um, with a very simple part that just maintains the location, the, the 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 you know view per location, but does nothing with strategies and and complex transformations, and then keep the rest for 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 the future. But I mean, just yes. I don't want any any answer right now, but just raising the stuff because. You know, when something has been prepared long ago, and then the 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 code changes, and then there is the requirement to rebase, and the more and more you know the the code base diverges from from what was initially prepared. So I mean, I'm okay also to to drop that, but but just wanted to know. No, no, don't drop it. Uh, rebase <laughs> and split up, and yeah, then we okay. see what we get in. Doesn't have to be a blocker. Not everything must be a blocker. So sure, yeah, yeah, I agree that that would much more fit into the stretch goals, something like that. I assume. Okay, thank you. Um, right. Um, so if everybody's okay with it, next topic is Stefan's. Rendering package APIs. Yeah, we, Andy, you and I, we briefly chatted. So I, I just tried to to add a Go mod um, to package APIs, and it works. So then you can easily render. The main problem was the third party conditions, which I moved into package APIs, and 
we have to tweak the scripts for uh, code generation a, a little, and then it's just working, it seems. You said you have another solution, so. Yeah. Um, so I don't have anything pushed, but I took the. Um, I've been working on this uh, API export demo for our controller runtime example repo, and the Go mod currently replaces uh, these three Kubernetes mods and controller runtime with our forks. If you want to be able to pull in an API, uh, in my case, I was playing around with API export, you basically just have to make the your uh, your Go mod look like the one in KCP. And so you need to copy and paste all of this, and then it will work. So I, I think mine is easier. Probably, probably. Anyway, so I mean, who wants to vendor? We had some people in Slack. So maybe it's worse to just try those approaches. I know. Yeah, I mean the the what I want to do with this example here is have a fairly minimal main.go where you're able to set up uh, a controller runtime manager that is multi workspace, multi cluster aware, and then have a standard config for a reconciler. Um, and then you you implement your reconciler and it's multi-cluster where and it just works. So the first thing that has to happen is it has to look up the API export and go find the virtual workspace URL for it and then go spin up all this stuff. Um, so in that case, like it it does need to pull in the API export type or work with it unstructured like either way yeah. can, can i see the go mod again do you use our forks there yeah this, this is not what you want i think it has to be until so we have uh we have some prs that we haven't opened yet upstream that relate mm -hmm. to the shared informer config and shared informer factory configs that we need uh, we need them merged into Kubernetes upstream before folks can use an unmodified uh, Go mod. And uh, I talked with Jordan. He didn't think that they would be controversial. So we just need, I, I was prioritizing um, working with the folks to get the code working so that we could enable anybody who wants to write a multi cluster aware controller to do so with. The Go mod replace directives in, and then the next step the, would be opening the, up stream. The replace directives are just to get the fork or to get Go mod working in general? Both. <laughs> um, Both. So if you're pulling in uh, basically, as you start to pull in more and more, um all of like our go mod has zero 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 dependencies on all of these things mm -hmm. so if you pull in a dependency on kcp or yeah if you pull in a dependency on kcp and it's got the zeros then you have I see, to do I see. all of this so, so if we I, don't have the zeros I, I think we can combine our two approaches, and then we get nice version numbers, and eventually we can uh, remove the replace. I think this fits. Yeah, I mean, maybe we can go in and just change the zeros to 23.5, and that might help uh, alleviate some of the issues. Why no go mod file in package APIs? It's fine. We can Isn't do that. Okay, okay. Thank you. I was just trying to do something that didn't require extra work, but I think it makes sense to have the APIs be as compact as possible so you can import them. Yeah. But I understand. I mean, the, the replace we need for the moment anyway because yeah. uh, we need the four. Yeah. Makes sense. 
Okay, and Sean, you had a question in chat. Should we do the queue builder based calls or just controller runtime? Um, what did you mean by that? Uh, I was just wondering if so, like queue builder will eventually call controller runtime, but I was wondering if the example that you're building to prove this out would use the normal queue builder calls uh, that they use, like from the book, do the cron job reconciler or whatever example, but that would be just as good because uh, it would just be like a here's what you change and now it just works um, based on the example that like everybody uses from queue builders book yeah you could you could do queue builder queue builder init and queue builder create api and then you would have to go in and tweak your manager or tweak your main.go a little bit and um, tweak your reconciler a little bit to make it multi-cluster aware uh, that's actually what I'm doing with the work that I haven't pushed up yet. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, any other topics before we do issue triage? Oh, all right. If y'all think of anything, uh, feel free to speak up. Um, I guess we'll start at the top with the new ones. Uh, this is not so uh, just a level set here. We're not trying to go deep in the details of things. We're just trying to set a milestone. So um, this one, uh, SAR for service account sync verb. Do we need yeah. this in 0 0.6 or is this a TBD? 0 0.6, if I'm not mistaken. It's part of uh, the TMC epic. It's, it's 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 the sibling of of the one for the API exports. That okay. is. If we don't have it, the thing the system is insecure, okay. completely insecure. So, got it. We want that. Uh, Stefan, you're insecure. By yeah, this this is some something I have to talk to Steve. Um, we don't want that somebody in, a, in an org workspace can hijack um, workspaces via initializers, which are not in the org. All right, As I'm going to put TBD for now. Yeah. Uh, creating workspace types you can't reference. I think this is definitely TBD. We need to fix it, but we have a workaround. Uh, Lake is, uh, we still have a, a variety of test flakes that I still think have to do with the system picking the wrong CRD for serving info on a wild card. Um, I'm going to, I think the, uh, the process for flakes should be to put them in the milestone we're currently working on and just keep bumping them until they're closed or or we no longer see them so uh unless there's any objections i'm going to put this in 0 0.6 since we're going to close out five shortly all right uh, this one we just talked about so we're going to put this into 0 0.6 uh if anybody has some spare time we have a an outdated architecture readme. Enable the cache mutation detector. It's already caught one thing at, when I was running it manually, and I know Stefan um, found another one. So I'm going to be probably putting TBD on most of these things unless you all um, speak up. So this one. We, I know Steve filed this and we talked about it, uh, that we're setting the storage version hash and including the logical cluster name as part of it. And Steve was questioning if that made sense. It's not hurting, I think. Might be a little hard to yes. uh, Add test for audit logs to have workspaces set.
and binaries to the releases. Yeah, this would be nice to do. Don't know when we're going to get to it though. I don't want it on this if anybody wants to help out with some release related stuff. And I guess this is repo health. Expose workload cluster capabilities via workload API. You know, Stefan, you had looked at, into this a little bit uh, and you cross referenced 1084. Um, do we just yeah, want it's to a big topic? TV it's a big topic where we have to, to meet and uh, discuss and brainstorm and uh, decide. Org level APIs. Um, remember if this was another one where they wanted to have a CR that lived at the org level that was then available everywhere or if this was different yeah it's it's both installing new apis and also accessing those somebody decided which are safe yeah i might check talk with craig some more about this one in general, we want to open up orgs to admins as yeah. far as possible. Uh, so I am. I would like to put this one in 0 0.6, given that we have it in the work packages doc. Any objections? Mm -hmm. okay. Quota, I think, needs to be in 0 0.6. I need to come back in and fill this out. Um, I don't remember if we decided that we were good on this one or not. I think the last statement was, yes, probably we have solved it. That was what Steve said last week. OK. Okay. This one, I think we can close based on the last comment here. Or do we need to make the URL immutable? I think that, that there might be reasons why you want to change it, but you must be aware of the consequences. So okay. I'm not sure we have to change anything. I wouldn't but document. Document. If we haven't yet, I haven't checked. Okay, so I'm going to change this that document that um, what is this cluster Changing. workspace shard spec okay. external URL? Yeah, our status I don't remember. I think it's spec. Um, has severe consequences or something like that. Actually, maybe, eh, we'll just change this to docs. Okay. Um, oh. I want to put a milestone on this. Okay, personal virtual workspace has issues. I think, um, assuming we do the user home workspaces, yeah. I think this just goes away, and because we'll like, I assume we'll get rid of the virtual workspace for personal workspaces, right? And like all of the auto, um, the magic around pretty names and the role bindings that look for um, the right subject name. Um, 
still have the question of how do we make it so that that a workspace is known to be created by i mean by a given user in for for now we, we use cluster role bindings for pretty names it's right but before using it for pretty name we, we also use them to indicate that um a workspace has been created by a given user you know it, it's going to be in the key of the like the workspaces path will have the user identifier in it oh yeah okay so so you don't go and yeah, yeah, i see you know you're not creating your home workspace that'll be you'll be assigned yeah, a specific yeah, yeah. And, location and any workspaces that would any workspace that would be created above the user workspace level yeah. uh would be created by some admin and would not have any owner uh, per se but just users uh, admins that have permissions to it but no no real owner yeah okay all right um i'm going to i kind of just want to close this one because we're not going to come back and fix it because um, the fix is to switch to home workspaces. So closing as this will go away and then switch to. Okay. Um, what was I? Deploy KCP with CRDB as the backing store. TBD. Or do we want to try and I, I mean I think anything any planning beyond 0 0.6 will do when we start planning 0 0.7, right? That seems fine. <laughs> uh, we talked about the logo. Protect GVR creation and consumption by controllers. And this one basically is done or almost done i still have a little bit of work left to do to close out wildcard watches yeah also also lukash work i think about the admission fits yeah, yeah. but so we are here it's good i'm gonna put it in f6 because yep. it'll get done This one, missing defaults and open API spec for map keys break compatibility. So this was around like, if you try to create a deployment on Kubernetes, it works fine using the kube control create command, but on KCP it fails because of some defaulting that's not present through open API. Um, Stefan, what do you want to do with this one? I wouldn't assign it to a I mean, it's documentation for the issue. We have to fix at some point, so TBD is okay. All right. Uh, this one, I think we can close since this workspace is going to go away. Yeah. Right. Um, so this one, we're talking about landing in a default user workspace, which when we do user home workspaces, you would have. So do we want to close this one too? Yeah, this one, this one is, is mainly, uh, can be closed. I mean, I, it, it was just, uh, um raised just to be sure we, we would clarify uh, okay, the, cool. the homework phase uh talk of design better controller structural patterns still would like to do that labels documentation uh sharing of personal workspaces i'm just gonna close this Yeah, I'm going to close this and we can open up a new one around the UX. Yeah, sure. 
Um, There we go. Do we want to keep this or close this given that the shard proxy was um, more of a proof of concept? I'm not sure what's this week. Can leave it open and when Steve's around, talk to him about it. You want to do that? Yeah, leave it open. Okay. Um, complete JSON schema compatibility checker. Do we still need to do this? Yeah, it's related to the topic around API evolution. Okay. Then we need that, and we have to invest. But it's TBD, I think. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Um, sharding. Is this some of this going to be zero dot six? Yeah, I have to read what is written here. Yeah, this is one part of zero six for sure. Yeah, maybe just rename the uh, put it in the milestone. I can rename and update. Then we have a epic copy. Yep. Okay. Uh, cross. Okay, this is also sharding, right? What we talked about. It's part of the other one, yeah. Uh, names. <laughs> I think we can maybe close this and. Uh, yeah, the only one which is left is workspace chart, and I would just rename it chart, maybe. Is it um, cluster workspace shard, right? Yeah. Or well, cluster workspace shard, one of the two. And then we had the separate Slack thread the other day about virtual workspaces not actually a workspace. But this, is, this is done. No, no, it's, it, uh, it was well, an idea not... to have an object, but we yeah. didn't concept. And we don't have an org workspace no. CRD. Yep types of workspaces, organization types. All right, so um, let's see, cluster works, a shard, shard, there is no organization workspace. Gonna do that and I'm gonna put this in 0 0.6 just yeah, because it's related yeah, yeah. to sharding. Yeah. Consistent caching proxy. I don't even remember this. That's also part of the sharding story. The front proxy update, basically. Okay. Uh, this was a panic from running a E to E tests that we had added into our Kubernetes fork. Um, I don't know what we're doing here. We haven't run it in forever, to my knowledge. And ideally, it would get moved into, if we if this is still a valid test that we want to keep, it should get moved into KCP if possible. Unless this is something where just in our fork, we run around the test. No, oh, I'm gonna put TBD on it. Um, we have this done. Yeah. 
Do we have any design or guide document? <laughs> guide or design document? We probably just need better documentation overall. Although we could close this and say that it's a duplicate of the one I filed that the architecture yeah, talk so. is out of date. Or the one about uh, controller authoring or something like that. Yeah. Seven three four. Uh four forty seven was the one I was looking for. Yeah, multiple, I think. Yeah. Okay. Um we are out of time. I think we did a great job getting through these. Uh most of these. We only have nine left because I'm excluding the logo, um, which I'm just gonna get out of our list while we're here. Um so thanks everybody. And we will see you next time. Thanks for your week. See you. Bye.